Good morning, everybody. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We are going to worship this morning. Cool? So, yeah. So, if you're in the car, you can honk. If you're outside, we can clap. So, if, if, if Pastor Logan says something good or if Allie hits a good note, uh, we'll, we'll honk and we'll clap. But, man, we are here to worship this morning. If you guys are in cars, you tuned to 88.3. Man, so everybody say hi to the Facebook Live world. Hi, Facebook Live. Uh, and, and man, we, we just want to encourage you guys this morning that, man, we serve an amazing God, even in the, the midst of, of chaos, even in the midst of, uh, of, of turmoil. Man, we can still come together and we can still worship the Lord. And so we're excited about that. We love you guys. We love our church and our church family. And uh, if you guys don't know, um, if you guys want to kind of get online or get, you know, find some a, a way to follow along with the songs, this song's called Won't Stop Now from, from Elevation Worship. But um, anyway, we're going to pray. If you guys would bow your heads. Father, you are good. Thank you so much that we get to come out. Thank you for the awesome weather. Thank you, God, that you are still on the throne, that you are in control. God, that we have unmerited favor with you, that your grace is sufficient for us. God, thank you that we don't have to be here, but we get to be here. Thank you, God, that, that just for your spirit, your word says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. So we are free to worship you, to lift our hands, to sing to you. God, we are free. And like David said, you could do anything else, Lord, but don't take your spirit from us. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together as the body of Christ and worship you and lift up song and lift up and worship you in word. God, if there would be somebody that doesn't know you either online or that doesn't know you here that you would have a word for them through the song or through pastor logan god we just call on your holy spirit come holy spirit now blow through this place blow through this place like a mighty wind just deliver us father from the craziness that's happening lord we love you we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
church, can you guys hear me all right? I know that a breakthrough is coming. Awesome thing, huh? What an awesome, awesome thing. It's so good to, to worship with you guys again. It's, it's a little different, but man, it's really cool. It's really cool. So, man, how many people know that there is power in the name of Jesus? For reals, there, there really is. And, man, there's power to break strongholds. And, and these aren't just things that we say because they sound really cool. I mean, it does sound cool. But, but the thing is, is there, it's true. There's power in the name of Jesus. And there's no other name under the sun on which people can be saved. I know there's a lot of people that think there is, but it's, it's just not true. And the truth is, is that when we call on the name of Jesus, man, there's so much power. There's power to restore. There's power to just heal. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. And we're going to sing a song that talks about that. He's the only answer to the darkness. He's the only uh, right among the wrong. And so we're here to proclaim the truth this morning. And if you guys can hear that, man, honk or give a shout to the Lord. I 
is written poem to certain Your word will never fail. I know that in every situation, yes, I know you speak the power to prevail louder than every lie. My sword in every fight, the truth will chase away the night. Your name is power. darkness, light arrives and heaven opens Holy Spirit let us hear it, when you speak the church awakens we believe that change is coming Holy Spirit let us see it when you speak, when you speak you scatter darkness light arrives in heaven opens, Holy Spirit here and when you speak the church awakens we believe that change is coming holy spirit let us see it your name is power of darkness freedom for the captive mercy for the broken and the hopeless Your name is power. surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every wave at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe. Call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the 
darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, your name is a lie that the shadows can't church keep yeah you guys keep playing man i don't know if you guys know what you're singing right here but this is such a declaration into the time that we're living in we're talking about the name of jesus having power and now we're talking about jesus jesus you make the darkness tremble jesus you silence fear but yet there's so many of us living in fear right now so what I'm trying to say is, if we are here today, I'm not downplaying any situation that's going on in our world, but what I am, what I am going to confess is 
when we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Bible says that he did not give us a spirit of fear. You don't have to be afraid contrary to popular belief. You don't have to fear when you are walking in love. You don't have to fear when you're walking in the Spirit. You don't have to fear when Jesus is walking beside you. You don't have to fear when you call Jesus your Lord. Because in the name of Jesus, He silences fear. These are not just words that we think are cool. This is declaring the truth, church. You don't have to live in fear of anything because Jesus did not give you a spirit of fear but of sound mind. And he wants you to be liberated and he wants you to walk in boldness and he wants you to walk in love today and he wants you to be an example of who he is. Amen? So we're going to sing this out again, and I want you guys to declare that Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus has the power to stop any virus, any kind of fear, any kind of thing. He's got that power when we walk in him, and let's declare that this morning as a body of believers. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome Jesus Jesus make the darkness tremble Silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Come on. What's up, Grace family? Hey, I've been missing y'all so bad, I'm actually happy to see some of y'all. All right, man, if you got a Bible or you got a device with the Bible on it, go ahead and grab that thing, turn it on, open it up, find the Gospel of John. We'll be in two places in John, John 14 and then John 16 talk to you about today about having peace in Christ and what peace in Christ looks like. I'm afraid some of y'all have lost y'all's mind over the last month. So we've got to reiterate what you got when you got Christ. It's 
John 14, John 16. Hope everybody doing good. Want to welcome everybody. Man, y'all came out on a beautiful day. Want to welcome everybody that's watching via live stream. Thank you for joining us today. Want to thank, while you turn it down, I want to thank all our volunteers. Man, they was up here earlier this morning setting all this up, getting things ready. Uh, they know who they are. So thank you guys for doing that. Kind of give you a projection. Uh, next week we'll do a do an online service only next week, and hopefully that first Sunday in May we can have church. So that's that's what we're hoping for, what we're praying for. But we'll just we'll see what's happening. We want to be obedient uh, to that. So all right, if you got your Bible somewhere around John 14, somewhere around John 16, honk or say I'm ready or something. <clears throat> all right. John 14, go find verse 27. We're just going to look at two things that Jesus said this morning, and we're going to walk back through it, though. So John 14, 27, going to be our first place. Jesus said, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the, Lord give, or as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. And then over in John 16, shouldn't be but a page or so over. John 16 Verse 33, still Jesus talking, he said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Like that right there, just enough to shout about. <coughs> hey, let me pray for the reading of God's word. Not that I need to pray for it, but pray over it, and then, man, we'll get through it. Father, we just, we're so grateful for you, so grateful for the peace that you offer us. And God, we want to thank you for today. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine, God, for allowing us to come out to assemble together. I know it's different, but it's still fun, and we still get to worship you. We still get to get in the Word. We get to see each other. We get to kind of hang out at a distance. But, God, we, we assembled here in honor of you and who you are, and, God, just thank you for this. We love you. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. <clears throat> there, there, you, there you go. All right, so, so in this text, man, Jesus has just dropped the hammer on the disciples. He told them he was leaving. He then promises the Holy Spirit. They're like, who is that? We don't know who he is. And then he talks about how they abide in him. And if they don't abide in him, like, they're going to be cut off, like all this other stuff. And then he tells them, on top of that, the world was going to hate you. And then he says, but you can have peace. Like, how can you have peace if the world hates you? But Jesus said, if you abide in me, You'll have all this stuff, and you keep that peace by focusing on Jesus. No matter what's going on in your life today, no matter what's going on around you, you can have peace if you focus on Jesus. That's why in 1633, Jesus didn't say, he didn't say you might have trouble. He said you will have trouble. You're going to have trouble. It's not a matter of if you have trouble. It's a matter of when you have trouble, because trouble is coming. So my question for you today is this, what has the world dealt you? And I'm not talking about over the last month. I'm talking about in life in general. What has the world dealt you that you, you jumped into, man? You took it and you just jumped right into it. Let me tell you something, because things, things might be all right right now. I mean, despite all this other mess going on. But life might be all right. Things are going good. I don't know about you, but you probably don't mind being quarantined with your wife. Mine making me do housework. I told her I wouldn't do nothing else today if I went back to school. She killing me. Y'all pray for me. But what have you jumped into? You know, things might be good right now. But I can tell you this. The world will turn on you. And the world will hurt you. That's why it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. You might be going through a season where you, you're peaceful. Things are peaceful right now. But then some of you are going through a season where like, there's no peace at all in your life and you don't know which way to turn. It could be you keep holding on to those things that the world's promising you. The peace of this world can never take place, the peace of God. You can have health and wealth and still not live in peace. Hey, those things are great, but that's not the peace of God. It may be peace of mind, but it's not peace of God. Again, John 14, 27, look what it says. Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. 
I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Notice that Jesus said, I don't give as the world gives. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for peace in the world, all you're going to find is trouble anyway. It may look good for a while, but you know how it goes. You jump into something. Hey, man, I'm loving this. I'm loving what the world has given me. But eventually, ain't nothing but some drama in your life. See, you thought, you thought that was the most amazing woman that you ever met in your life. Now you done found out she's crazy and you stuck. <clears throat> you thought you was marrying an independent man. You didn't know you was marrying his mama too. Y'all get honky, y'all know I'm right. What you seek will determine your peace. Are you seeking earthly relationships to find peace? Are you taking a substance in order to find peace? Are you working extra hard trying to please people in order to find peace? What you seek will determine your peace. Look, mountaintop experiences are great. Anybody can, can have peace when things are going good in life. And it's easy to have peace when you're holding the trophy smiling. But real peace is found while you're in the valley. Let me tell you what Christianity really looks like. Because you probably ain't never been told this before. But this is what Christianity really looks like. Valley, valley, darkness, another valley, loneliness, mountaintop. Another valley of more darkness. That's what really Christianity looks like. It's been said that peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of Christ through trouble. You see, peace is not some surreal place somewhere. Peace is not a pill you take to make the pain go away. Peace is a man named Jesus. Jesus is peace despite hostility. Jesus is peace despite uncertainty. Jesus is peace despite depression. Jesus is peace despite virus. Jesus is peace and peace is Jesus. Psalm 39, 7 says, But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. You see, in Christ, your peace is divine peace. It can't be divine if you're not in Christ. Peace in Christ is what all other peace is based on. If there's no peace in Christ, there's going to be no peace in other parts of your life. Notice how Jesus' words, 1633. Look at it again. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In Christ. Notice it says in me, which means in Christ. You're not going to have peace if you're not in Christ. And in the list of the fruits of the Spirit that the great Apostle Paul gives us, the third one he lists was peace. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now let me hit you with something. John 14, 1. John 14, 27. Both times Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Why did Jesus say do not let your hearts be troubled, not one time, but twice in the same conversation. Because the heart is the central part of your emotions. The heart tells you who you really are. So if you're losing your mind and you're not trusting God through this, it's because your heart is revealing who you really are. It's what's in your heart that matters. It's either fear or it's peace. The heart is what keeps you alive. So it's what's in your heart that matters. The heart, did you know, is the driving force behind every decision that you make in life. Why do you think that the world is constantly tugging at your heart? Why do you think Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled? Because when your heart is troubled, all logic and all common sense is thrown out the window. You do some stupid stuff when your heart gets all in the way. That's exactly why God does not look at the outward or the heart. He looks at the heart. He does not look at the outward appearance of a man because the heart reveals the real you. Luke 6, 45, Jesus said, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. You ever said something stupid? Because it was deep in your heart. It just came out. You didn't even mean to say it. It just came out. 
Just because things on the outside are bad, don't let those things on the inside of you. Because when the inside of you gets messed up, all of you is messed up. And then you'll never know what peace is. You can't control what's going on. You can't control a pandemic. Don't let your heart be troubled. That's what Jesus said. So what's the cure for a troubled heart? Believe God and rest in the peace that Christ offers. Now I'm about to get all up in your business right here, all right? Somebody honk. Some of you, some of you need to trust God like you trust in that medication you're taking. You don't even know what you're taking. You can't even spell it. You can't pronounce it. You couldn't write it down if you had to. All you know is some doctor said, take this, and you trusted that. But you can't trust God? Some of you need to trust God like you trust in the Internet. Some of you need to trust God like you trust in the news. You believe everything they say, but you can't believe what God says. You believe all that other stuff, but you ain't believing God. No wonder you ain't got no faith. Look, I don't know about y'all, but I'm sick of lackluster Christians. I'm sick of these Christians talking about I got great faith, but when it thunders, they the first one hiding under the bed. Y'all know I'm right. I just said what y'all was thinking. Some of y'all, y'all so worried about this stuff, you're about to have a nervous breakdown. Like, at what point did you quit trusting Jesus? How much more does God got to do in your life to prove that he is faithful to you? It should take you twice as long to praise God as it does to complain to God. Look, I'm going to tell you something. Man, Jesus ain't got to do nothing else for me. He ain't got to do another thing for me because he saved me and that's enough. So it don't matter how low this valley gets. It don't matter if we never step foot back in that building right there. I'm going to trust God with my life and I'm trusting him through all this. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus, Jesus is my source, not a corona check. What's your heart look like today? Is there peace in there? Or is it chaos? I don't know if you knew this or not, but there's 50 types of hearts listed in the Bible. 50. I'm going to give you a few just because I think it describes a bunch of us. I ain't going to name them all. But just a couple because I think these describe us. Broken, contrite, proud, wicked, tender, pure, Upright, clean, perverse, bitter, stony, deceitful, and foolish. That's just a few of them. The point is this. When you depend on your heart for peace, your heart will turn on you. That's why you have to be close to the heart of God. When I was a kid, we used to sing this song in church. And I know a bunch of you probably know it. It was named Near to the Heart of God. And the third verse goes like this. I ain't going to sing it because I don't want to embarrass myself and everybody else. But it's what it says in the third verse. There is a place of full release near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait for thee near to the heart of God. See, when you get near to the heart of God, that's where you find peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let me explain something to you. This is not peace with God. You made peace with God when your nasty behind got saved. This is peace of God. The peace of God is something that you hold on to. That's why the Apostle Paul used the word guard when he said it guards our hearts. See, in the Greek, the word guard is a military term, meaning that you've got to keep watch. You've got to keep watch over your heart. You've got to keep watch over the peace that you got. See, the peace of God, it guards believers from anxiety, from doubt, from fear. But the peace of God has to be active in your life. The peace of God is something that you, you hold on to with everything inside of you. And when you hold on to the peace of God, you will not be defeated by your circumstances. Your sorrow will turn to joy. 
your fear will turn to boldness. Your doubt will turn into confidence because that's what Jesus promised. When you don't have peace, there really ain't nothing nobody can do for you. I can come to you. I can tell you my problems. I can blow off some steam and I can feel good for a little while. But if I ain't got peace in Christ, I still ain't got no peace. I might feel better, but I ain't got peace. Only God can give me the peace that I'm looking for. See, the prophet Isaiah, he called Jesus the Prince of Peace. He didn't call Jesus the Prince of Convenience. He didn't call Jesus the Prince of Comfort. He didn't call Jesus the Prince of Preferences. Isaiah called Jesus the Prince of Peace. When God promised peace, he didn't promise you convenience. He didn't promise you comfort. And he sure didn't promise you preferences. You will never receive peace while expecting convenience. The only person they can stop you from having peace today is you. Peace does not come from people. Why? Because people can take it back. Peace does not come from situations because when the situation changes, you lose that peace. I don't want peace that comes from the convenience store. I want peace that the world cannot give me. I want peace that can only come from the throne of God. That's why Jesus said, I do not give as the world gives. Because it's not your peace anyway. It's his peace in you. John 14, 27 again. He said, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That's why you got to be a believer in Jesus. If you want to rest in peace, you first got to rest in Christ. And when you rest in Christ, you automatically get his peace. You will receive no peace in your life until you give your life to Jesus. I don't know where you're at today, but I know a lot of us are panicking. A lot of us are unsure. We don't know what's going to happen in the next week, next two weeks, next two months. But I do know this. If you're not a believer in Jesus, it ain't going to matter what happens because you're never going to live in peace. So, man, I want to encourage you today. Man, give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. It's easy. You ain't got to say no magical prayer. All you got to say is, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, save me. Jesus, give me your peace. And it's a done deal. Nothing magical. Nothing crazy. You ain't got to go through no 12-week class. Just, just, Jesus, I give you my life. And that's it. So, man, I'm going to have a worship team come back. I'm going to pray for you. They're going to sing for us. So let me pray for you right quick. Father, thank you for your goodness for your mercy, for your grace, for your peace. God, peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we don't get it. We don't understand it. We don't deserve it. But you give it to us. And thank you. So God, I want to pray for all these people that are here today, all these people that are watching online, that God, you touch them. God, touch them supernaturally. Let them come to know you, the real you. Not the religious version of you, the relationship version of you. And God, just save us and help us. We love you in Jesus' name. Church, you guys having a good day? So, man, I I, I just want to kind of clarify that that we're not downplaying. Don't don't think we're up here just downplaying everything that's going on. We're, it's not that. It's just there's a difference between. I, I see a lot of people saying, "Well, I'm just trying to be careful," and they're using that as a crutch 
to not trust the Lord. So as we sing this song again, we want to believe the words of Jesus in this place this morning. Amen. so much. Thank you for such a good word that we can have peace in you. God, when we can't have peace in any other thing and any other circumstance and any other person and any other situation, God, we can always have peace in you, Jesus. So we thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Even though I don't understand it, we can have peace Lord, that you are on the throne, that you are in control. God, that your protection is over us. God, we pray for this world, Lord, and we pray for the, the lost, God, and we pray for the hurting, and we pray, Lord, for the addicted, and we pray everyone, Lord, in this world that's lost a loved one. God, we pray for your peace. We pray for your comfort. God, we pray that you would just move in a mighty way. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys are dismissed.